Today, I'm not going to preach a sermon from the pulpit. I want to talk to you, not preach. Well, maybe a little preach, but mostly I just want to talk to you. And what I want to do is I want to talk to you about this church. And I want to talk to you about what it means to me. And it's really important. Um, Churches are going through very difficult times right now in this country. There are churches and temples and synagogues closing all over the country every week. We all know that religious attendance at churches, it's plummeting, it's going down. We know that. And yet here I am, knee deep in the 21st century, and I'm standing here and telling you how much I love a church. And the reason why I love this church so much, it is one word, and it is the word depth, D-E-P-T-H, depth. This is a place of depth. And that's very important to me because my whole understanding of God, my whole understanding of the spiritual journey is about honoring the depth that I have within me as a human being. It's depth. It's from our depths that we love. We fall in love from the depths of who we are. We love our children and grandchildren from the depths of who we are. We treasure our friends and it comes out of a place of depth. We have dogs and cats and horses and birds. We love them. It comes from our depths. It's from the depth of who we are that we create music or we write stories. It's from the depths of who we are that movies are made. Poems by poets are written. It's from a depth experience. And for me at least, depth defines what it means to be not only a human being, but on this search for God. When I was a little boy, I didn't know much about depth. God and religion was all about height. God was up there. Heaven was up there. God was a million miles away. And we would say these prayers and go to church, somehow hoping to be in touch with that God way out there. I don't think God's way out there anymore. We've been to outer space. There is no street of gold. There are no pearly gates. There is no throne. We've been up there. We've looked around. The only thing that's up there, stars, galaxies, and more stars and more galaxies. To find God, we don't go up. We go in to our depths. The poet Mary Oliver asks the question, what is it that you will do with your one wild and precious life? That is a profound religious question. What will you do with your depths? What kind of human being do you want to be? What calling will you respond to? What kind of life will you create? Depth. And the reason why I start there today is that this church is all about inspiring one's death. That's what we are about. That's our calling as a church. We do it in various ways. One way we do it is that we try to have deeper conversations in the life of this church. In case you haven't noticed, we are not the kind of church that tries to indoctrinate people. We don't have a list of beliefs and and a sign-up sheet. That's not what we're doing here. We're not trying to get everybody to believe alike, think alike, look alike, behave alike. There are churches out there that will do that. And their mission is to create little Christian robots. That is so far from who we are, it's hard to believe. We're not trying to do that. What we're trying to do is to create deeper conversations. 
And this is why we have people who come to our church who are trying to help us take our faith and integrate it with the world. Understanding the world better. Understanding who we are as human beings better. That's what we're trying to do. And so, for example, I see my friend Scott Carter today. He's a playwright. We had a conversation with him about this amazing play that he wrote. We've had scientists in our church talking about the relationship of science and faith. We've had poets in our church. We've had historians in our church. We've had theologians in our church. We've invited people to come into this community to help us have deeper conversations. That's why we have artists. That's why we have an art show. That's why we had a conversation with Dan McClary and David Mellon. We do that because artists and poets and writers, historians and scientists, teachers, they are all after this one human thing to live more and more out of our depths. And so I love that about our church. We're trying to create deeper conversations. And so when you come here on a Sunday morning, we're not trying to take your faith and put it in a compartment. We're trying to take your faith out of a compartment and let it interact with the world. And sometimes it's exciting and sometimes it's scary and sometimes it's a little strange. I mean, after all, why are we going to have a Bruce Springsteen mass tonight? We're doing it because that music that you just heard this man sing, integrated with the depths of who he is as a human being. Is there anybody here who has not needed the most hopeful thing of all, a little human touch? So I love this church. I love it for the deeper conversations. I also love it for the deeper community. And I am more convinced now than ever that we are all desperate for more community. I happen to think that Los Angeles is one of the most lonely cities in the country. And I'll tell you why. First of all, we spend way too much time in our cars. Cars are bad for relationships. Now, maybe if you grew up in a small town, they were good for relationships, but <laughs> not in big cities. We spend hours and hours in our car by ourselves. And so there's a kind of loneliness that's built into this, this life that we have in this city. And then people also come to this city because they want to make it here. Have you noticed that? And what I've noticed that when people want to make it here, I always have this feeling they're not looking at me, but they're like right looking past me. And so I think sometimes relationships are hard. So it's a kind of lonely place. And then it's also a place that's so transitory. People come, people leave, people move back. It's amazing. We've lost church members, they leave. They come back because they move back to L.A. It happens all the time. And the other thing that I see that makes this city hard, it's become a very expensive place. And I see young families especially. And they are doing their very best with one child, two children, three kids. And it's taking everything they have just to pull it together. You take all of that together. And it tells me that we need community. We need a place where we can actually go. And we can know some people. And some people can know us. That we can be connected. And that when we are grieving, you can count on somebody from your church to be with you. And when you're celebrating, you can count on somebody from your church to celebrate with you. It's community. We are desperate for it. We are hungry for it. I will say, for me at least, every Sunday, there's always one highlight. And my highlight every Sunday is standing at the door greeting people. Now, part of that is because, whew, the sermon's over. <laughs> but what I love is black and white and brown, gay and straight, 
People who've been here for 30 years, 40 years. People who are here for the first Sunday and they think they have landed in heaven. And they come out and with handshakes, with hugs, with words of greeting, people feel connected. And they leave this place a little less lonely and a little more human. That's the kind of depth of community that we're trying to inspire in this church. And then there's the third thing. And it's that I also think we're trying to be a church of deeper actions. And we ground our deeper actions in the life of Jesus. Because we know that when Jesus, for example, preached his very first sermon, which was not, by the way, the Sermon on the Mount, his very first sermon was in a synagogue. He stood up and he said, I am here to bring good news to the poor, to bring release to the captives. I am here to help the blind see and the lame walk. I am here to feed the hungry and to bring life to those who are broken. That's the Jesus way. You can't really be a follower of Jesus unless you also care about the kind of people that Jesus cared about. Deeper actions. Deeper actions like Sister Norma that I read about her a few weeks ago. She works every single day, seven days a week on the border of Texas and Mexico. She works at a Catholic relief center for those who have been arrested. They bring them on the bus, they drop them off. We're talking about people who have been walking for days, trying for a better life. They're, they're, they're cold, they're hungry. The children are crying. They have more dirt on them than any human being should ever have on their bodies. And there's this little Catholic sister, Sister Norma. And she makes sure that they all get a hot shower. By the way, a hot shower is about as close to a religious experience as you could have. And she makes sure they get some hot food. And she helps those moms and those kids. And she makes sure they get to wash their clothes. And then she puts in a Disney movie. And those kids that have been crying, they're now laughing watching the movie. That's the human touch. And the human touch is always the divine touch when it's offered in that spirited kind of way. That's deeper action. And that is the kind of church that we're trying to become, to have these deeper actions that make a better world. This year, we're going to uh, embrace, I hope, the biggest Christmas project we've ever embraced as a congregation. We're gonna provide tennis shoes. Nike tennis shoes, right? No? Converse tennis shoes, forget Nike, uh, Converse tennis shoes. And we're gonna to try to provide hundreds of pairs of shoes for kids who are homeless, but are still a part of the Los Angeles School District. Now, I don't know anybody's economic background here, but I really believe there's not one person here who could not provide one pair of tennis shoes. We're going to provide hundreds for them this year for Christmas, and they're going to get distributed to those who need. That's a deeper action. It's the kind of action that begins to transform the world, and it makes the world a more humane place. I know the world has huge problems. We cannot solve all the world's problems, but we can do our part by trying to be a Jesus community in the world. And so that's why I love our church. A place of deeper conversation. A place of deeper community. A place of deeper action that makes the world a little bit better. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you is because 
in the next few days, over the next few weeks, we're going to do what we do every fall. We're going to ask you if you would be willing to support a church like this. I'm not going to tell anybody what to give. We're not going to twist anybody's arm. Not going to make anybody feel guilty. All I want to say is that deeper community, deeper conversation, deeper action deserves a deeper generosity from all of us, including me. And so, friends, as I say every week, I love you all. Let's love one another. And as we get closer and closer to this season of Thanksgiving, let's also find a way to tap into some deeper generosity and to love our church. I thank you for everything that you have done, and I thank you for everything that you will do. And that's what I wanted to say this morning. Amen.